Hey guys, and um, I wasn't even planning to make this video honestly because this computer has been reviewed before and you know their reviews are probably going to be better than mine but I know if, if I just bl kind of blow this video off someone's going to request me to do it so here you go, I'm throwing it at you. This is my review, This well it's going to be my review of the 15 inch late 2013 MacBook Pro with Retina display. Uh, I recently got about a month ago. I've been extensively using it, and I guess I'm ready to give my final thoughts on it. Um, just a preface, this computer is wonderful. <laughs> that is all I have to say about it for now. Um, I will get into the specs and everything and how great it is later in this video, but for now, let's just go ahead and go with just a regular walk around. So here is the MacBook Pro, the 4-pound, 15-inch MacBook Pro. This thing is quite thin and light, as you can see here. It's much thinner than the MacBook Pro, and I believe the MacBook Pro is under an inch now, uh, when it used to be slightly over. So, uh, you know, yeah, this thing is built for going places, and, you know, thinness and lightness, and yeah, there it is. Um, you know, I can hold it with one hand, and it's not even a sweat. So, anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and go around the exterior of the computer. On the front, we have absolutely nothing except the latch. They they did away with both the IR blaster and the uh, the sleep light, so those are now gone. So there is the front of the MacBook Pro is now pretty bare. Moving on, we have our MagSafe 2, which, you know, I know you guys don't like the change of connector, but they had to do it to get this thing as thin as it is. A lot of people have been complaining about MagSafe 2, saying it's not as strong, and, uh, you know, it's been popping out, but I know I'm probably not the prime candidate for the, to make this opinion, but I use my computer on my desk. I never have an issue with it. I realize if you put your laptop on a bed, the covers may, you know, pop it out of place, but putting your laptop on a bed is murder anyway, so, yeah. Moving on, we have two Thunderbolt 2 ports, which both do um, 20 gigabits per second. And then we have our uh, single USB 3.0. The USB ports on this laptop are kind of scarce. Two ports on a 15 inch laptop like this I think is just slightly too little. Uh, I would have expected to see at least three, but you know, they're pushing Thunderbolt, um, so I guess that's all right. These are USB 3.0 ports. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that already, but yeah. If you're doing anything that requires more than two USB ports, you're gonna wanna pick up a USB hub like I did. A slight annoyance, but eh, I use this laptop in a desktop setup a lot, so it's fine for me. Then we have our uh, single headphone port there. Moving to the right side of the laptop, we have uh, three ports here. We have an SD reader. We have the full-size HDMI port, which is nice to see. Uh, MacBook Pros have never had that before. And then we have our other USB 3.0 port. That is literally it. That is all you get. Which, I mean... For a user like me, and for a lot of people actually, that is enough. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's enough ports. As you can see on the bottom here, same deal, looks very similar to the previous gen, except it has two vents on both sides, which uh, draw in air, suck it up to the two asymmetrical fans here, and shoots it out the, uh, the vent in the back, as you can see. Um, here we have our MacBook Pro branding. It used to be on the lid, well the MacBook Pro did, uh, but they changed it around now it's on the bottom. I guess because they couldn't fit because of the thinner display bezel, which it does look nice. It looks more streamlined in my opinion. Uh, just, yeah, we'll get into that eventually. But there is the exterior tour of the MacBook Pro. Very solid computer. I don't think anything else touches this computer in terms of build quality and precision craftsmanship. This thing is just very, very high quality. And that's the reason I love Apple products. I mean, if they were cheap hunks of crap, I wouldn't buy them, honestly. So, yeah, anyway, that was the exterior of the laptop. What do we say? We go ahead and open it up, take a look at the inside, which is where all the goodies are. So, here it is. Here is the 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro with Retina display. I'm going to kind of move the display, or the uh, camera, like that. So, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, standard fare for a 15-inch MacBook Pro. We have our keyboard flanked by two speakers on either side, which I actually want to give a little uh, close-up to. These speakers have micro-drilled holes, which are um, a lot smaller than the previous uh, generation holes, I believe. I know it's kind of a minor detail, but it looks nice, and it's if you sit back, you can't even notice them. It's pretty amazing. 
Um, just a little side note, because I know I'm probably going to forget to mention this later, the speakers on this laptop are pretty damn fantastic. Some of the best speakers I've ever heard on a notebook. Um, and that's not saying, well, it is saying a whole lot, because notebook speakers are usually cheap crap. But, yeah, it's all good. Here's the keyboard. Uh, the only thing changing being the power button used to be up here. Now it's on the keyboard right about there. Uh, I guess I do had to do that to, again, make the laptop thinner. Uh, but it's fine. Older keyboard covers for the previous generation MacBook Pro will fit. I have verified that. So, um, yeah, that'll work if you were worried about that in any way. And then here we have the uh, Piet de Resistance. I know I have shitty French accent, but there it is. There is our retina display, and you guys can see me there, and my camera is being a piece of sh But yeah, anyway, there it is, the 15-inch retina display with a 2880 by 1800 resolution, and the screen looks freaking fantastic. Oh, and I also forgot to mention one other thing. There we have the uh, multi-touch glass trackpad, which is... I always praise the MacBook Pros for this and all of my MacBook Pro reviews. This is just the god of trackpads right here. First of all, it's made of glass. It's never going to wear down like those plastic ones. Second of all, it's large. It's quite large. All trackpads would be this big, I think. Um, you know, it just it's a joy to use. It's multi-touch. It's got... Um, I know Apple has a patent on the way the trackpad receives finger input, and that's why the trackpad is better than pretty much everything else out there. So, yeah, it's just a little side note. I love to praise the MacBook Pros for their trackpads because they're pretty freaking fantastic. Let me go ahead and zoom out, and we'll go ahead and turn this baby on. And press the power button. See how fast it boots up. Now, like I said, well, I don't know if I said this, but it does have... Well, actually, let me just go ahead and go over all of the specs right now while you watch it boot, which it's done by the way. <laughs> it has a 2 gigahertz Crystal Well Intel Core i7 4750 HQ and what Crystal Well is is it's Haswell but with Iris in the Intel Iris Pro graphics which has a uh, 128 megabyte DRAM package right on the graphics chip itself which is also within the processor. So basically it has a little bit of its own working memory. It doesn't have to share every single uh, you know uh, process with the main memory it does share some obviously because 128 megabytes isn't a whole lot but the iris over the iris pro the iris pro is definitely a lot better uh, this graphics chip is actually you know comparable to the dedicated gpu in the previous gen macbook pro with retina display uh, the 2012 one i believe it had a NVIDIA GT650M and the Iris Pro is comparable. It doesn't do quite as well in the gaming areas but for everything else it's pretty darn good. Um, yeah, so the processor is quad-core in case you didn't figure that out already. It does turbo boost to up to 3.1 gigahertz which is nice. It has 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz of DDR3 or actually it's LP DDR3 RAM. Uh, LP being low profile. Uh, it's not upgradable, it's soldered to the motherboard like everything else in this computer, but we'll get to that down the road um, and why I don't see that as a problem. Uh, and then the only thing that is upgradable in this thing is the PCIe uh, flash base SSD, which pretty much doubles the speed of the fastest SATA 2 drives. Well, it almost does. Um, it's quite amazing how fast the drive is, but you know, as you saw, the computer booted up in. 10, 10 to 15 seconds. It's just absolutely amazing. And to demonstrate the speed even more, I'm going to go ahead and launch every program in my dock at the same time. Let's go ahead and launch all these. Let's open them all up. So, there you go. Uh, it's still opening stuff. There you go. Everything is open. So, now I'm going to go ahead and close it all. Whoops, switch to finder, let's go ahead and go. And it's done. There it is. I just opened, let's see, like 10, 15 programs and closed them all within a matter of 30 seconds. So, as you can see, this laptop is quite, quite fast. Uh, this is uh, capable of handling a lot at once. So, there you go. That's just a little bit of a speed demonstration. I'll go ahead and go ahead and um, run a disk speed test just to show you the read and write speeds of the SSD itself. So I'm going to start that. 
and zoom in and as you can see we're getting close to 700 megabytes right which is quite amazing it beats anything else out there right now uh, except for other PCIe SSDs alright and then we're getting 725 megabytes per second read this is pretty darn amazing considering that the fastest SATA 3 drives uh, only top out at about 480 megabytes per second so uh, this thing is uh, really really fast especially in the SSD department. So, um, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and actually put the MacBook Pro back where I usually have it sitting, which is over there, uh, so I can talk about the uh, concept of this laptop for a sec. All right, here we go. I have everything set up as I normally do throughout the work day. Well, the, the work day. <laughs> Who does actual work? <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the concept of this laptop. First of all, I'd like to say this laptop is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it starts at $2,000 for this configuration with the 8 gigabytes of RAM, but I think it's honestly worth it for what you're getting. You're getting a precision crafted machine, you're getting very high uh, specs, or high end specs, I should say. You're getting a ton of free software, OS X, you know, all that good stuff. This is just quite, quite a nice computer. I guess I should go ahead and uh, show the about this Mac screen before I go ahead and get into the uh, conceptual thing I was talking about. So let me go ahead and zoom in. Do to do. So there we go. 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. We got the 2 gigahertz i7. It's a late 2013 15 inch. This is the Iris Pro. It's running 10.9.2. Yeah, that. There it is. I don't know why I showed that when I just told you all of that information. But anyway, um, yeah. So, now we're going to get into the conceptual part. And this laptop is quote-unquote sealed if you don't have a pentalobe screwdriver to get into it. Um, all of the parts except for the SSD are soldered to the motherboard. There's basically nothing you can upgrade except for the SSD. But let me explain to you why I don't think that's a problem. This computer has a quad-core processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a blazing fast PCI Express SSD. I am, like, I am extremely doubtful that you will have any issue with speed on this computer within the next five years. Maybe by that time, it'll start to show its age. I mean, it's obviously going to start to show its age progressively, but even by then, it should still be sufficient enough. Uh, to use as a computer. I mean, 8 gigabytes of RAM, I mean, if you think about it, even in this day and age, even in 2014, 4 gigabytes is even a viable amount. I mean, it's not going to be for very much longer, but it's, you can get, you can get by with 4 gigs of RAM. 8 gigabytes of RAM, that's double. And at least for my uses, I know I had 16 gigabytes of RAM in my custom build before I bought this thing and I never used it. There was never a time where I went over seven gigabytes of used uh, memory in Windows at least. Now Mac OS X has very good memory management and you know it's going to handle this amount of RAM very efficiently. Eight gigabytes, basically the bottom line what I want you to get from this is, is that eight gigabytes of RAM is going to be enough for quite a while. This laptop again has a quad-core processor very high in specs. It's going to last a long time. So that's why I don't think that the non-upgradability matters that much. This laptop is already very high end and you're not, I don't think you're going to need to upgrade much in this laptop, honestly. So there you go. That's why I think the Retina MacBook Pro is a good investment, even though it doesn't have upgradable RAM. I know some people have those virtues where they just will not buy anything that doesn't have that. But I mean, honestly, I don't see it as a big issue. Oh, I should probably mention uh, battery life. This thing has a built-in um, battery, which technically can be replaced if you use a little alcohol to soften the adhesive, sealing it in there, but I do not think they sell battery units by themselves anyway. Anyway, I'm rambling. It has great battery life. If you're not doing much on this laptop on battery, you can easily get eight hours out of it. Um, if you're doing <clears throat> intensive stuff like, <clears throat> let's see, I was in Chrome, I was watching Netflix, which is horribly unoptimized and, uh, you know, uses a lot of resources. I was in Chrome, I had like four or five tabs open. I got about four and a half hours before the computer gave out. 
Now, that's technically kind of intense use. I imagine if you were like rendering a video in iMovie or something, it'd be even less. But four hours, that's pretty decent even. So, I mean, if you're just web browsing and not doing a whole lot on the computer, you can easily get seven, eight hours out of it. So, there's that. Um, yeah, the Retina display is beautiful. This computer is just fantastic all around. High-end specs, beautiful Retina display, which can scale, by the way. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but it can scale to higher resolutions if you need to. It won't look as good, but yeah, it's there. So, I mean, all around, this computer is just wonderful. It's built great. It's got... it's blazing fast, got a beautiful screen, comes with, you know, a bunch of free software, you got OS X, you don't have to worry about, you know, the problems you face with Windows on a daily basis, at least, you know, in my opinion, and it's just a beautiful computer. If you're ready to uh, make that investment into a high-end Mac, this is definitely a good uh, choice, so, yeah, overall I'd have to give it at least a 9 out of 10 if not more. I don't think I can think of any cons I've ever had with this system uh, in the month that I've owned it. Everything about it I just love. It's a great computer. Well, the only con I can really think of is the lack of USB ports, but yeah, anyway, that's why you get a little USB hub like I have right there. Anyway, yeah, I keep rambling way too much. Um, yeah, overall, wonderful computer. So glad I bought it. Yeah, there you go. That's my review. <laughs>